Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If we're looking at a curve in 3D space defined by some vector valued function, and we want to know the distance traveled on the curve from one point in time to another, that might be difficult, right? Our curve can be twisting and turning through three dimensions, not easy to eyeball most likely. So here, we're going to use our good friend integration to help us do this, and to see how this works, imagine that we tried to approximate this total length along the curve here, from t equals a to t equals b, and let's say we did that by taking several vectors, placing them end to end, and then adding up the total length of these vectors, just maybe to get an estimate. And as you see here, it'd be pretty rough estimate, since there are places where we aren't doing the best job of approximating what's really going on along the curve. But going with this, each vector would have its own x, y, and z components, and we'd figure out the length of each of these vectors, and then we would add up the lengths of however many vectors that we use to approximate, and that would give us our estimate of the length. Here we've labeled the arc length s in this case. So we have a pretty mediocre approximation, and it took a lot of work finding all these magnitudes of vectors and adding them all up. So we can do better, of course, right? Obviously we could do better by using more vectors, and that will give us a better estimate, but at the cost of having that much more work to do, since we have more and more vectors and we'd have to find the magnitudes of each one using the magnitude formula that we know and then add them all up. So some of you already know where we're going with this, I think. The good news is that if our vector valued function is well behaved, in this case, if it's differentiable on our interval from A to B, then the mean value theorem and fundamental theorem of calculus allow us to say that as we use shorter and shorter vectors, fitting more and more of them along this curve from A to B, then this is going to give us a definite integral with this formula you see here that looks a lot like the magnitude formula, only with derivatives in it. And in fact, it is the magnitude formula for the derivative of this vector valued function. So much easier here than what we started with with all those approximations, our actual exact formula for finding the arc length from a to b on this curve will be the definite integral from t equals a to t equals b of the magnitude of r prime of t with respect to t. We're going to work two examples here in the video for you. First one here, we want to calculate the length of this vector valued function 3 cosine of 2t comma 3 sine of 2t comma 2t. You can see a theme there with the 2t's over the given interval for t from 0 to 2 pi. So we'll go ahead and call our arc length s, we said, because most textbooks use s. And that makes sense because arc length starts with s, right? Sure. So that's going to be, remember, the integral from a to b of our magnitude of the derivative dt. Okay, so we'll go ahead and figure this out. We'll need r prime first, so let's figure out r prime of t. So r prime of t will be a vector function here with the derivative. Be careful with your chain rule here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. We're going to keep this multiple 3, but a multiple of 2 is going to come out from the chain rule, so we should get negative 6 sine of 2t. Similar thing here. We'll keep the 3. Derivative of sine is cosine. The chain rule is going to give us times 2 coming out as well, so we'll actually get 6 cosine of 2t. The derivative of 2t here, pretty easy, just 2 there. So that's our r prime of t. Now we'll actually need the magnitude of that r prime of t to integrate. I'm going to give myself some more room to start over here. The magnitude of r prime, remember that's going to be the square root of all this stuff squared. So if I square this first thing, we'll get 36 sine squared of 2t. Here we'll get, so plus, 36 again, this time cosine squared of 2t. And here, 2 squared will give us 4. Now what you might notice here is we have a Pythagorean identity. If we factor out our 36, we really get 36 times sine squared of 2t plus cosine squared 2t. So 36 times that plus 4. And remember what this is, right? This is a Pythagorean identity that equals 1, so we get 36 times 1 plus 4, so that'll give us actually the square root of 40. Or if you prefer to reduce that, we could go ahead and pull out the square root of 4. We could say 2 root 10 here. So this is our r prime of t 
magnitude that goes in the formula there, right? So now we just compute our integral. Our arc length is going to be the integral from a to b, which in this case is 0 to 2 pi, of our magnitude, which was 2 root 10, integral of that with respect to t. Now this is easy, this is just a constant, so the antiderivative of that with respect to t would just be 2 root 10 times t. And if we evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi, that's not so bad either. So plugging in 2 pi for t, the 2 times the 2 that's already there, we would actually get 4 square root 10 times pi minus plugging the 0 in for t, of course, will give us 0 there. So we get 4 square root 10 times pi for this one. Let's look at one more. We'll calculate the length of the curve over the interval 1 to 4 here, and our vector valued function is ln of t comma 2t comma t squared. So we'll first need our derivative, r prime of t. If we take the derivative here, we'll get, for ln of t, we'll get 1 over t. The derivative here, derivative of 2t will be 2, and derivative of t squared, that will actually be 2t. So that's our r prime. We'll need the magnitude of this to figure out what we're integrating. So the magnitude of r prime of t, that's going to be the square root of all of these things squared. So if we square 1 over t, we'll get 1 over t squared. Plus, if we square the 2, we'll get 4. And if we square the 2t, we'll get 4t squared. Now, this is what we would integrate, and this looks pretty ugly to integrate if we're going to try and integrate this. So we might think about how does this simplify, and if we don't see it right away, that's okay, but this actually factors, believe it or not. This is a perfect square here, this is a perfect square here, and this middle thing actually is some combination of this thing times this thing over here, right? So this is actually, if we factor this, this is actually... 1 over t plus 2t quantity squared, okay? And we'll show you why that is. So 1 over t times itself gives us the first term, and 2t times itself gives us the last term, and this is actually 2 times the first times the last. So we have a perfect square here. So this times that would actually give us 2, and this is double that. So we get a perfect square inside of this. It's a little bit weird to factor this. If you haven't seen this with maybe some fractions in it before, but if we factor this, we get the same factor twice. And so really technically, what we have is the square root of a square, and since t's are positive, we can just say that this is actually 1 over t plus 2t. So that is our actual magnitude here. Notice that we get some nice square root and square reduction there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our arc length then. Our arc length will be the integral from a to b, which is 1 to 4 in this case. And we got the function. Notice this is not a vector anymore, right? Because we found the magnitude 1 over t plus 2t. We'll integrate that dt. We give ourselves some room here. We'll go ahead and do the integral, so the antiderivative of 1 over t with respect to t is going to be ln of t, plus the antiderivative of 2t is going to be t squared. We'll evaluate that from 1 to 4, so we will end up with ln of 4 plus 4 squared, which would be 16, minus ln of 1 plus 1 squared, which is 1, and a couple of things we might want to notice here. Um, so ln of 1 is actually 0. So we get ln of 4 plus 16 minus 1. So we really get plus 15. And that is our solution for the arc length on this function from t equals 1 to t equals 4. All right, everyone. Good luck with your arc lengths. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.